Hi there, and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. My name is Julian. Now, today I'm just going to continue on with the track realignment uh, slash yard revamp and also tie it in with a Facebook post that I put up the other day in regards to a mimic control panel for the point motors. Now, I had a huge number of comments from the previous video, uh, which was actually going through the actual track realignment and uh, ripping up old track and putting down the uh, new layout of points and so forth, which go through the yard and slash new depot area. Now, one of the questions actually that came up, uh, I was asked a few times, was what do you do when you want to get a rake of coal wagons up to the coaling stage through the somewhat short head shunt? Now, I was aware of this, and uh, really what it comes down to is in the future extension phase of the layout, this head shunt will actually become longer. But, however, in the meantime, I sort of felt that I probably need, well, some form of solution, which I'll actually make a permanent solution. So here I've actually connected the branch line into the coal siding, or at least a wagon siding where coal wagons could be stored. Now this actually gives enough room for at least maybe three to four coal wagons to be uh, marshalled up into the coaling stage. So now heading through to the control side of uh, the system. Now I haven't installed any point motors uh, into this rear line track but I have begun looking at a control panel and I did have a previous panel that didn't really cover this area of the layout and uh, if we look at this panel now um, it is a wood construction with a laminate PVC type face to it and inside is basically spaghetti junction and it's quite a mess so um, I'm actually uh, well, going to be replacing this anyway because the track layout's going to change for this particular panel. So I've been looking at sort of different ways I could create a panel. So uh, what I came up with is this. Now, the idea of using a plastic container of some sort is not a new idea. I have seen it being adopted before on other channels, um, ranging from uh, Tupperware containers to sort of plastic lunch boxes and so forth. And I sort of thought that's actually just a really easy way of putting together a panel. Now, I've actually found these at our local kind of bargain store that we have here in New Zealand, the warehouse, and these were $6 a piece. Now they actually come um, with compartments as you can see, but uh, of course the great thing is, if we open this up, uh, we can lift all these compartments out. Now interestingly actually when I uh, pulled this out, I looked at this particular length here and I thought, you know, maybe that might become an, come in handy for somebody who's uh, modelling an O-gauge. Could this be the side of a girder bridge? But what we now have left is a simple plastic box which is roughly about A4 in size and it's got a clip lid and a hinge and I think you know this will be a great way to assemble control panels for the layout. Now the other great thing of course with the um, hinge lid is of course you can open it up to gain access to uh, the back of the switches for easy soldering and all of that kind of thing. So. Uh, that is what the box is and I've started putting one together and this is probably some people would have seen this on my Facebook post 
and uh, this is the beginning of a control panel that is just for that particular area of the layout where I've done all the track realignment and I'm just using very small single pole double throw center spring toggle switches so these uh, return to their center position so uh, when you click click that it just returns so it gives you a pulse of electricity as opposed to permanently staying on uh, which is what you need for solenoid point motors. So that's where we're at with this panel. Now I'm just going to flick over and we'll have a look at uh, my understanding of uh, analog point control wiring. So a number of people asked in the Facebook post as well, how on earth is all this wired up? It's all well and good of course to uh, install a bunch of switches uh, inside the lid of a plastic container but what about all the wiring? So I'm just gonna flick over and I've done a diagram on the computer and hopefully that will help to describe or detail how the wiring works on a analog point control system. So in this example here, this gives everyone an idea of how the wiring setup works for a analog point control setup. So, you know, based on that panel, control panel that I've made up out of a, using a plastic box, uh, this is a very simplified version. Uh, of course, uh, as we can see, there would be more point motors and switches that would continue on. So I'm just showing an example where we have four uh, switches and point motors. So uh, it's, it looks simple on here, but of course, when it comes to the actual wiring within your layout, uh, of course you're going to have your transformer in one location and uh, the switches of course will be obviously, well theoretically near the transformer. So this area here um, will be close to these switches. And then of course the actual point motors, these components here, are going to be spread all around the layout. So as long as you can sort of think of it in those terms, um, this is more like a London underground version of a wiring <laughs> setup. So of course, what you what you essentially got is really basically what comes out of the terminals is actually two common wires. One set uh, or one of the wires connects to all the terminals on one side of the point motors. So you could just simply have a single wire coming from the transformer and it could almost actually be a little bit like the equivalent of maybe a, a bus wire that you would have on a DCC layout. So you could simply have a, a single wire that runs around the entire layout, covers all the areas in your layout, um, and then from terminal blocks or whatever version of connection you'd like to use, you would then have these uh, common wires connected to essentially basically this bus wire. Now the green wire on this side of course is not going to be a, a very long wire as such because basically it is going to go from the terminal on your transformer into your control box. Um, so it'll be a quite short wire. So uh, it will be a single wire that will go into your control box and then maybe inside there, and this is what I'm going to do with my box, is it will be actually be um, a terminal block um, inside the box. And then from there, uh, from this single wire, we would then split off all the common wires, which will go to the central terminal on each of the um, toggle switches. So uh, that's that part. Then we get into the next part, which is connecting up the outer terminals of each of the toggles, which then specifically go to each of the point motors that that particular toggle switch controls. And these red and black wires will then come out of the control box. And ideally you would probably uh, cluster them together and into groups that might go to certain areas. Um, so I, as in, I don't mean cluster together as in salt, join them together, but basically um, bind them together with uh, cable ties or something like that, just to, you know, keep the wiring tidy. 
uh, and then that would then go to each one of the terminals on the other side of the solenoid point. So looking at this in a little bit more detail um, of how I went about putting this together, uh, and I did describe this on the Facebook post and you know, I keep referring back to that. Um, so essentially, basically, I put, uh, put the layout together on the computer. I used Illustrator, but uh, any, any old uh, software will do. And I think even from track planning software, you can um, print out sections of a layout. Um, that's just simply printed onto some white A4. And then I have glued that to a piece of uh, three millimetre MDF, uh, which is fits sort of inside the lid, but also giving enough room. And if you can see there, it doesn't go right to the edges because when that closes over, there's actually the lip on the edge of the box to consider. So that is why it doesn't go fully to the edges of the inside of the lid. Uh, once I've glued that down, then in the plan that I put together on the computer, I had indicated in where the holes need to be drilled for all of the switches. So they were all drilled into the MDF with the print on top. Uh, once I've done that, then I placed the MDF inside this lid, then simply just drilled through the holes and through the plastic lid, uh, making sure to make sure that it doesn't move around and you want to keep all the holes nicely lined up. So um, there we have it. That is our, what I call my lunchbox control panel. So um, I hope you found that useful and there will be more coverage on this, um, particularly as I begin to actually wire this up and also actually when I begin to install the solenoid points within the actual track layout. I have a particular system of how I do the point motor installation, so uh, that will probably also make for another interesting video as well of how I go about that. But Nonetheless, I will bid you farewell for now. Uh, the next video that I'm actually going to put up, which possibly might be quite soon, uh, will actually be some actual ballasting on the layout, which I know that a lot of people have been asking about, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be getting that up soon. But anyway, uh, please everyone take care and look after yourselves. Be safe, and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.